So it's June the 1st, 2018. I'm on a local patch of land I know, and I've been asked by um, a certain company to get some photographs of birds in flight because apparently they're extremely short of them. And the remit was just any sort of birds really, so that makes life a lot easier. So I've humped down here with um, my Nikon D500, um, 600mm f4 lens. I'm going to leave it at 600mm, I'm not going to put the 1.4 times converter on because uh, I've got such a narrow field of view as it is, it's not worth it. Funnily enough, when I got here there was a grey heron flying over, but like a fool I'd left the camera on the settings from last night because I'd set my tripod up in the bedroom window at home to record some lightning, so I was on a mirror up and bulb setting and um, missed the bird completely, so that's one complete cock up for the day already. But we're hopeful and we'll just keep going until we um, get some birds in flight. So like many wildlife photographers, when you're hanging around with not much happening, you tend to notice the other things that you're not supposed to be photographing. I just had a damselfly land in the, the bush opposite. I didn't want to drop the camera off the 600mm lens though, so I've left it on. I did actually get some video footage, which I'll play for you. Just let me load it up. I'm going to turn the camera around as well, so I'll cut off and come back. Here we go. I'm going to struggle to maintain focus with this, but we'll give it a go. Damselfly on a Nikon 600mm f4 lens. <laughs> Not the ideal lens for shooting a damselfly with, but, but there you go. I've said it before as a wildlife photographer, the one thing you need, and it's even more important than your gear, is patience. And I've now stood here for two hours, two and a half hours possibly. How many shots have I took of birds in flight? None. How many shots of a damselfly have I got? Quite a few actually, because he keeps coming back and landing, so I keep photographing it, even though I don't do macro photography. Um, some of them are quite nice shots to be fair. So you just have to be patient and wait and it is a waiting game. It can be pretty tough at times, but on a day like today, it's absolutely beautiful. So you may well ask, what settings have I got on my camera for birds in flight? And if you ask most wildlife photographers who shoot birds in flight, settings always differ. Um, I'll tell you what mine are now, give me a second. Okay, I'm on ISO 500, F5, even though this is an F4 lens, just to give it a slight amount of depth. Uh, and my shutter speed will be one two thousand five hundredth of a second. Oh, it's a very bright day today. You want to keep your shutter up for birds in flight. Really, a minimum of a minimum of two thousand. I would say a minimum of two thousand five hundred. If you can get above that um, without increasing the ISO, where you've got a noise problem, then that's brilliant. But um, you really want to be shooting. I mean, if I could get away with a hundred ISO, I would. I nearly said ASA. Then that's how old I am. So I do think also carry or a pair of binoculars. I'm not a birder. I don't need a pair of birding binoculars really. Um, these are just an inexpensive pair actually. What are they? Practica Sport um, 12 by 25 and they're perfect really for what I need for bird spotting. I'm only trying to acquire the subject through the binoculars and then put the camera on it really. Other bits I've got are a Benro bag and I'll walk around it. I've got two bags, both of which will hold a Nikon lens uh, of 600mm with the camera mounted. This is the better one, the Low Pro Do one, which has better zips. I mean, the zips on this Benro tend to stick sometimes. Uh, I mean, not stick, they just, they're just not easy to pull down. Whereas the Benro, um, the Low Pro ones are like silk. Um, but other than that, this is a much better bag. It's got front pockets, it's got two big side pockets. Um, there's a bottle carrier built into the side. And it's got a, a chest harness and a waist harness as well. Um, and like I said, inside there you can mount, let's unzip it, you can mount your 600mm lens and stick some bits on top in this bit here. I normally carry the binoculars and the um, optical sight that I use on my camera 
inside there. Great bags, really worth the money, and obviously camouflaged as well, which makes life a lot easier when you're working in a hide, because this can't come into the hide with me, it's too big, so it has to sit outside. So I'll keep talking whilst I'm looking for birds in flight. Um, how long have I been a photographer for? Oh, since the age of about 14 really, 15, I'm 54 now. Uh, I mean, I was a photographer when it used to be analogue and not digital. And you used to, have to put a film in the back of your camera and you didn't have a clue what you'd got until you had it processed, um, which could be a nightmare. And when you got home and developed it, I mean, I used to run my own darkroom. Um, and obviously processing the film and having nothing appear would be your worst nightmare. Um, I used to start off, I used to do weddings. Um, I actually did a city and guilds in photography at college, uh, city and guilds 923, um, which was useful. It taught me from everything from analog darkroom through to the photography skills, black and white, sepia toning, daguerre types, all that sort of thing. I think photography as a medium now is um, far more accessible. Um, I'm not sure whether accessible is a good thing because I've noticed a huge amount of Wedding photographers have sprouted up from everywhere now simply because with digital you can press play on the back of your camera and if the shot's no good you hit delete and you shoot again until you get it right which as an analogue photographer with a film in the back of a camera you had not one clue what you'd got until you got the film process so it had to be right, you had to have the knowledge and understanding of how a camera works. People now buy a camera, stick it in aperture priority or program um, and fire away. I mean seven times out of ten they'll get good results. But there's the three times you won't uh, and they know nothing about photography they know nothing about apertures ISO or ASA as we used to call it in Britain um, and they know nothing they know nothing they know nothing other than the fact that the camera works and it takes a picture so that's my um, my background so I went through the analog stage moved over to digital in around 1999 2000 um, and bought a Nikon D100 which I think you can now buy on eBay for about 20 quid um, and that's how far it progresses I'm now using this D500 which, you know, 20.9 megapixel, that's big enough for any wildlife photographer. And obviously with the crop sensor, this Nikon 600mm lens becomes a lot longer than 600mm. Although there is a bit of a myth about the F4, um, because it's not technically F4. Because it's a crop sensor, I have a lot less light falling on that smaller sensor. So it technically can't be an F4 lens. I would suggest it's probably around, I mean I can't do the maths, I was never any good at maths at school. Um, I would suggest it's probably around a 5.6 lens with a crop sensor um, but that's the, that's the way it is and people don't understand that and sometimes they don't believe it but it's true <laughs> 